Hi, today we're gonna to be talking about Screaming Frog SEO Spider. Now, what is an SEO Spider? It's a web crawler. And when you think about the World Wide Web, the internet itself, it is called a web. And when you hear a spider, a spider is what goes on a web. Essentially, Google is just a web crawler that is crawling different links and going through the web, indexing it, and giving you the results on a silver platter. Now, what a web crawler does is it emulates Google. All Google is is a web crawler, and all Screaming Frog SEO Spider does is crawl the web. It essentially emulates Google, and it gives us information that we can do to help Googlebot, the little spider that crawls the web, all the information it needs. This is powerful for diagnosing technical SEO issues and making sure your website is on a solid foundation for all of your SEO initiatives, as well as a lot of cool tips and tricks to maximize your organic traffic and scale those SEO rankings. So if we jump in here, we can check out the Screaming Frog SEO Spider website. We can look here at what their pricing is and you can purchase this beautiful tool. It's been around for almost ever. Uh, they even have a free version that allows you to crawl 500 URLs. So if you have a small website, you can get this for free and you can try it out. Um, now the paid version is $260 per year and you can purchase the license there. A very fair pricing by this team. You can see some of what this does, finding broken links, analyzing SEO data and redirects, duplicate content, all kinds of cool stuff. But rather than just looking at the website, how about we jump into the tool and I'll show you what it can do. So we're opening up a new instance of Screaming Frog SEO Spider. And you can get an idea of the UI, the user interface, and what this tool is all about. Um, it may look a little complicated at first. I'm sure it does. I've been using this tool for five, six years, so it's kind of home for me. But when we first look at this, we have a big search box up at the top. This is where we're gonna input our website. So example.com, you're gonna put in your website there, you can click this big green start button. And that's going to start the crawl. It's going to start going through this website and just crawling all the different URLs. Now, example.com is a one page website, so we don't have much here. This is where the URLs will crawl and index. Now, if we take our example website, refillfinder.com, and we run this through it, it's going to wait, and then it's going to start crawling all the URLs. You're going to see those populate here. So now if this is your website.com, then you can see all of your different pages. This is the URL viewpoint, and this is where you can get a 30,000 foot view of your website, all of its pages, and see how they interact with each other, how all the SEO data, like SEO meta title, meta description, H1, H2, how those are all present on the pages. You could also connect this to Google Search Console data, Google Analytics data, and even Google Page Speed data. This is very powerful, as you can see, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's get down to the very basics of how this tool works and how the UI is organized. So once we have some sort of crawl running here, we see this is our URL port, but right now we have some kind of strange URLs. So we have image URLs, all kinds of stuff. If we go on here in this overview tab, you can see all the URLs encountered and we can see the crawl data. Here we're set to all. If we just switch to HTML, these are your all of your real pages. So HTML pages are the real website pages that you're used to seeing. We can right click this, open in a browser and it opened on my second screen. But if we see here, we can see the page. It's just one of the page is on our example website. And so here is the basic viewpoint. You know, if we pause this, this website's a little large, so we'll pause it for here. We can see we've already crawled a thousand pages. And so for large e-commerce websites, as well as local websites and SaaS websites, you really want to see all of your URLs and you need to know them from a 30,000 viewpoint perspective. This is what this URL viewpoint gives you and we can dig way deeper into it. So if we crawl, scroll down on this overview tab, we can see different file types, which are very interesting. We really just care about our HTML pages for the basics. We can see security. So you may have HTTP URLs, 
which we seem to have some. These are not good. Um, it does tell us the status code. So it tells us like here, we are redirecting from HTTP to HTTPS. This is critical for SEO. HTTP is an old security measure. You can't have those on your website. And so this just give us some of the security details. So looks like there's some issues we may want to resolve for this test website. The next tab that's really important is the response codes um, overview section here. And you do have internal and external. Typically, we're just interested in the internal. And here is what those status codes represent. Now, if you're familiar with SEO, you probably know what status codes are. But if you're not, we can briefly review them. A 404 page essentially means that it's an empty page. So if we open this here with our right click, we can see page not found. You can't have broken pages on your website or the Google crawl is gonna get very confused. It's gonna be landing. That little web spider we talked about is gonna be landing on error pages. And that's gonna reflect negatively on your website. So within this response section, we can see our four XX errors, which is all of the 404 pages or the 430 pages. Um, whatever the status code is, we'll investigate that and see what it meets. We're also probably gonna have internal links towards these pages. And these are really stuff we want to clean up because you can't have Google crawling links on a website that go to a 404 page. We can also see our three XX pages, which are ones that are redirected currently. You still normally want to clean up the internal links going towards these pages. Scroll down this list and you'll see URL, page titles, meta descriptions, H1. These are all topics that we really need to think about for SEO. And so this overview tab just lets us see all of this data for all of our URLs. And the important one is the page title. We just spoke with Kevin Indig, and this is one of the top ranking signals. We've known this for a long time. This tab will just tell you all of your page titles by the URL. What's so great is that any of these tables, you can export directly to Google Sheets or to a CSV or to an Excel file. You can go through those, you can optimize them, you can check them out, what can be improved. Here, we can see that we do have some potential improvements, although overall, the title tags don't look too bad. And we can look down here, we can see we do have titles that are too long for Google. And so S Screaming Frog will notify you of these essential issues. But what's great is you don't even have to look at that yourself. You can go into the issue tabs here and it will instantly tell you, as we can see, page titles over 60 characters. It will already tell you that. H1 missing. You can see all the URLs with H1 missing. You can export these and then you can work on fixing those issues. It even prioritizes these by highest priority, so what is critical and what is not. That being said, you can't just export these issues and uh, call it a day, because it's very important to double check and review these. So you do have you know, blocked pages, but our search pages, it's probably fine that we're blocking our search query pages. So this is when someone searches on the website through the search button. Um, that's probably not a real issue. And if we go here, we can see those HTTPS issues, definitely a problem. We can see the four XX issues we already noticed, definitely a problem. All of these will be here beautifully laid out for you with H1s missing, all of the different issues. You're gonna export those and figure out how to fix them. If you need additional details on how to fix these issues, just comment below. I'll tell you how to fix each issue. I'll send you resources, whatever you need. Just comment on the video below. And we're gonna take a step back and look at various case studies of different websites within Screaming Frog, what you can do with it, and as well as the crawl config, which can get very exciting on how much you can just do with this tool. So let's jump in again. And if we go up here and we actually go to our clean listing here, we're gonna clear this. Before we ever start a crawl, we can go up to configuration, crawl config. And within here, we have a lot of options. Sometimes you'll wanna crawl linked sitemaps. Typically I include this and I'll even specify which crawl, uh, which sitemaps I want it to crawl. Um, we can go to extraction. Normally I'd keep this the same. If you want structured data, you can add that in. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. But what really matters here is this rendering. 
So it starts off as text only. If you do have a JavaScript website, you're gonna want to change this to JavaScript. You can do one crawl with just text, one crawl with JavaScript, if you don't know if you have a lot of JavaScript. JavaScript websites have their own issues. JavaScript SEO, it's its own thing. So we'll talk about that in another video. We have all of these different features here. We can even include URLs, we can exclude URLs. We can do all kinds of stuff. Here is one of my favorite features of the crawl config is the user agent. From here, we can actually change from screaming from SEO spiders to Google bot directly. So this will actually create the user agent so that it looks like Google bot is visiting the URL and you can get exactly what they see. If you are diagnosing some Bing traffic, so perhaps you had a traffic drop on Bing, you'd want to change it to Bing bot or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo. You have all kinds of options here. Um, and it can be very useful to change these around. I usually keep to Googlebot or Screaming Frog Spider. Googlebot is my normal one. It's very useful to go to. <laughs> Definitely my favorite part is we can add in APIs. So we can also crawl in Google Search Console. We can pull Google Search Console data for every one of our URLs. We can crawl Google Analytics for every one of our URLs and get those data points next. We can choose the exact data points we want. We can filter out branded names for the search terms on Google Search Console. We can do all kinds of great stuff. Add those into your crawl if you, it's your own website and learn why. We also have segments here. I'll link to various features below so you can look them up. But this allows us in, in an e-com website, we can separate it by product categories and product pages and blog posts. So this is very useful. You can just add here for any segments that you might want to segment the URLs by. Now let's switch it up and look at a local website. So we have this Arnold Masonry website here, and this is just a local website. You know, it's not too big. It's 180 HTML pages. We can see that here. And then we have the URL port. So when I'm auditing a website with Screaming Frog Spider, I'd first notice a couple things here. I'd notice there's a lot of redirects here. We see 301, 301, 301, and we see a lot of 200s. We don't see really many 400s or any right now, but we see a lot of 300s. This field here, you can scroll on and it gives you a ton of data. So we see the titles, see that there's, well, probably some improvements that can be made in the titles. These are very long titles. And we can just scroll more. We can see the meta descriptions, essential. We can see they have two meta descriptions. We can see the H1. Very important, kind of get an idea of how their website is structured, the basic on-page SEO with H1s, H2s. We can really, from a 30,000 viewpoint, we can see everything about their website. We can see the word count on these URLs, the average words per sentence, how easy it is to read. There is so much here, even the crawl depth, if you know what that means. And we also have the in links. This is the internal links towards that page. So just off the bat, we have a pretty much a full idea of what this website is to a web crawler like Google. I'm gonna look in here and instantly see these 301s and I'm gonna see something strange here. I'm gonna see slash AML. And so a next essential feature you need to know about Screaming Frog Spider is the filters button. So we go up to the search bar here. We can click this button to filter. Now what I'm going to filter here is slash AML because it seems like these pages are the ones having redirect issues. So I'm going to say address contains AML. We're going to click OK. And now we have this list of URLs that are redirecting. And we want to investigate directly on the website where these 301 errors are actually coming from. Why are they on the website? Because a web crawler crawls links. You have to remember this. It clicks on links and it crawls the entire web. And so they had to have a link towards this page for Screaming Frog to pick it up. And if we go down in here to the URL details, we can see all kinds of details about the URL and we can go to end links. And from here, we can see where it crawled over to this redirect. This is a broken link. So right off the bat, I see that, okay, they're linking 
in multiple spots towards these redirects with slash AML in them, rather than the correct link, which doesn't have AML in it. So when we clicked on that link, it actually should just go direct to the page. So that's instantly a primary technical SEO issue I noticed right off the bat. And now this is something that would be listed here within the um, the 301 redirects. So it would list out the 401 or the 301 redirects here. And we would have seen this, which is includes primarily the AML pages. And this would be a similar way to get to that issue. Although you really want to investigate these URLs in a kind of engaged manner like I'm doing now to get the most value out of a technical SEO audit with Screaming Frog SEO Spider. And so right off the bat, I would say, okay, we have some 301 redirects. Now, what can we do to export that? I would go to bulk export response codes and I would go to internal, which means our website, not external links that are going to Wikipedia or somewhere else. And I would do uh, client, or sorry, redirect three XX in links. And now it's a complicated way to say it, but what this means is that these are the broken links on our website that are going over to these pages. And so now I would do uh, Arnold Masonry, right, dash, and then it would be these broken links. So I would just say dash broken links. This is gonna export a list of broken links, or sorry, they actually go to redirect links. So my bad, redirect links, and it will give us the full list of sourced and destination. We can see, okay, so gallery links to these weird gallery URLs that we need to fix that link there. And let's see how many we have here. You look here, should be able to, it seems to not be counting it. If I scroll down, we have tons of these redirect links. Just, I mean, this is 2,300 rows of redirect links. And why this is happening is because if we go to services, we actually have those AML redirect links in our navigation. So this is a huge issue. We don't want Googlebot to be clicking on this navigation and then going to a redirect. Think about how bad that's gonna be. It's gonna dilute our page rank, our authority on our website. All kinds of issues are gonna be caused from that. And so right off the bat, I've diagnosed one of the biggest issues on this website, as far as I can see. And if we go up to the issues tab, we kind of use this as a guideline. It's a roadmap to what issues might be present. These are not always the case. Like to, and it'll give you a description of why it's an issue and how to fix it. This is very useful to use. Uh, it's not always correct. And so we have to uh, review these different issues, read up on it, Google search it, do your thing and see what you can do. Here we do see long title tags. So this is very long title tags <laughs> and they don't seem optimized for SEO. So that's definitely gonna be something we would export as page titles over that, Arnold dot page titles. This is how you would go about doing an SEO audit with Screaming Frog SEO Spider. Now there is so much cool stuff you can do with Screaming Frog SEO Spider, and I'll be going into them in future videos, at least if you guys are interested, so let me know. Some of these are include identifying duplicate content, looking at your internal link structure on your website and how it can be helped. You can even on visualizations, visualize your entire internal link structure, even on a 30,000 page e-commerce website. You can use it to custom extract information from your website. For example, product categories with no products in them or blog posts with a certain keyword in them. And you could even use it to build links. So give me your ideas on what you wanna see next. Thank you so much. Leave a like if you do like the videos I'm providing. I appreciate you. Comment what you think about this video. Thank you guys. Talk soon.